Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to our, our press conference uh, regarding House Bill 135. Uh, I, I wish that we didn't have to talk about this topic today, but uh, it is a relevant topic and uh, it's, it's unpleasant, as you will hear in some of the remarks uh, from our speakers today. And, uh, uh, but it, it's something that, that needs to be addressed in the Commonwealth. Uh, I want to make some remarks and then we're going to introduce some of our speakers. At the present time, one of the most violent threats to women in America is from the practice of female genital mutilation. The number of women in the United States at risk of being victimized by female genital mutilation has sharply increased. Many of these females live in Pennsylvania, and we need better state laws to protect them. This is especially true in our metropolitan areas, such as Philadelphia. And both myself and Representative uh, Donna Bullock, who is with us today, represent parts of Philadelphia. Female genital mutilation is thought to be a rite of passage, which marks a girl's transition to womanhood. Female genital mutilation involves cutting healthy and normal female genital tissue and interferes with the natural functions of a female's body. This practice is usually performed at home by family members or other non-practitioners who use unsanitary, unsafe, and primitive methods and implements, including shards of glass and sharpened seashells to perform the cutting. It's reported that the procedure is typically performed on a kitchen or a coffee table with no anesthesia. According to the World Health Organization, an estimated 140 million women and children worldwide have been victims of female genital mutilation. That includes 228,000 in the United States. Female genital mutilation is most prevalent among females between infancy and 15 years of age. Female genital mutilation is a barbaric practice and is considered torture by the United Nations. Female genital mutilation has no health benefits and harms females in numerous ways. Immediate complications can include severe pain, shock, hemorrhaging, infertility, cysts, and the increase in the risk of newborn deaths, complications, and bacterial infections. Women also suffer emotional and psychological trauma after female genital mutilation. All of these traumatic injuries can be avoided if we address the problem through proper legislation. In 2008, the World Health Assembly passed a resolution on the elimination of this practice, stressing the need for concerted action from legislation and law enforcement to stop this practice. This is why it is so important that we pass House Bill 135 as quickly as possible. This legislation would make it a felony of the first degree to cut genital tissue of a female minor. The United States Department of State considers female genital mutilation not only a public health concern, but a human rights issue, as the practice violates the rights of women to bodily integrity. Shockingly, there is no current state statute in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania that outlaws female genital mutilation, even though an estimated 10 to 25,000 Pennsylvania females are at risk. That's an estimate. Pennsylvania is among the states with the highest number of women who have been victimized or are at risk. If this bill is signed into law, Pennsylvania would do join 21 other states in protecting the rights of females by prohibiting this barbaric practice. This practice is a clear violation of the human rights of females. Female genital mutilation manifests the worst type of discrimination and marginalization of females in society and exposes how the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania has fallen short when trying to protect females from this degradation, brutality, and cruelty. I am proud to be the pro prime sponsor of House Bill 135, and I hope the Judiciary Committee will soon be moving our bill for a vote. We have some of my colleagues and another speaker uh, with us this morning. Uh, our next speaker is Danielle Moore. Danielle is a junior at uh, Lafayette College in Easton. Uh, Danielle served on the advisory committee for Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, she was also um, an intern uh, in international law seminar, which studied female genital mutilation in Washington. Her major is international affairs. Her hometown is Hatboro, Pennsylvania. And she's also a varsity athlete. She's a swimmer at uh, Lafayette College. Danielle. Good morning, and thank you for coming to hear about Pennsylvania House Bill 135, which will criminalize female genitalia mutilation throughout the state. 
As said many times before, women's rights are human rights, and protecting young girls from female genitalia mutilation in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is no exception. According to the Population Reference Bureau, 19,480 women and girls are either already have already undergone or are at risk of going through female genitalia mutilation. This puts Pennsylvania 11th in the country for highest level of risk. By passing House Bill 135, we are making a statement that there is no tolerance for human rights violations in the state and, push, and this pushes forward an agenda that promotes equality under the law. This practice is outdated and only results in negative physical, mental, and emotional effects. There should be no reason for this bill to not pass. Since the practice does not have malicious intent, it does not fall under aggravated assault and needs its own category to give protection and a voice to a community that is often not heard, young immigrant women. As a woman, a citizen, and a human rights advocate, I urge you to pass House Bill 135 and criminalize female genitalia mutilation in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker is my colleague, uh, Representative Kathy Rapp. Thank you, uh, Representative Mert. Uh, it's my honor and pleasure to be here today to speak and uh, uh, support this bill, which Representative Mert has courageously put forth in uh, the General Assembly. It is appalling that today we can see this kind of mutil mutilization taking place on young females in the world that we live in today, where we believe in women's rights and human rights. This is a timely piece of legislation, as we've already heard. We are looking at uh, a huge influx of immigrants into our nation and to our state. We need to make sure that young women who are here in this country and who are about to enter this country are protected from this abhorrent practice of mutilating young girls in our country. This should never be happen happening in the United States of America or the Keystone State, which was the bedrock of our Constitution and the laws of our nation. So I am here to support my good friend and colleague, Tom Mert, and I am very thankful for his courage to put this bill forth in a very uh, timely way that uh, as we see the influx of uh, the immigrants. And I myself am amazed at the number of cases that we are seeing in Pennsylvania uh, as far as this practice. So I am proud to stand here today as a woman legislator, mother, grandmother, in support of this legislation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Representative Rapp. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Representative, Representative Donna Bullock from Philadelphia. Thank you, Representative Mert. The practice of female genital mutilation is a scourge that afflicts an alarming amount of girls and women in the United States. Many think that this practice does not happen here, but as you have heard, they're wrong. More than 500,000 women and girls living right here in our country are at risk or have undergone the surgery themselves. And that number is increasing, particularly among the growing immigrant population where the practice is prevalent. Female genital mutilation can have lifelong health consequences, including chronic infection, bleeding, and severe physical and psychological pain. It may also lead to complications during childbirth, as well as increase the risk of newborn deaths. No matter how the practice itself is carried out, Female genital mutilation is often performed with the intent of subjugating and controlling women. We often talk about the cycle of abuse or the cycle of poverty, but this cycle here is no different, and it lives through a culture of oppression and miseducation. While there is a federal law banning the practice, I applaud Representative Mert for standing up to break this cycle. This horrific practice is not only recognized internationally as a human rights violation, but it is more accurately described as torture and an extreme violence against women. It is time for the Commonwealth to join 
the close to two dozen states across our country and recognize that female genital mutilation is a crime. It is time for the Commonwealth to stand up for young women who are at risk in our state and let per perpetrators know that it won't be tolerated. This practice has no place in the Commonwealth, it has no place in the United States, and it has no place anywhere on this earth. Again, thank you, Representative Mert, for taking action, and I stand with you as we protect our young women and girls in the Commonwealth. Uh, thank you, Representative Bullock. Uh, our next speaker is Representative Gary Day. Thanks. Thank you very much, and good morning, everyone. I want to thank uh, all my colleagues for being here today. I'm here to show my support to raise awareness of this brutal practice, as you've heard, called female mutilation. I only want to share a few words with you today. But one of them is I want to thank my colleague, Representative Mert, for his sponsorship and bringing this issue forward and uh, to try to stop these, these barbaric practices that may be occurring in Pennsylvania here today and controlling and are attempting to control our female population. When I first learned about this issue, I found it disturbing that some cultures would find this acceptable. When I further read that millions of women have been affected, I was even more disgusted. When I found out this practice was moving to the United States and here in Pennsylvania as well, I was horrified. In fact, hundreds of thousands of women right here in the United States may have been victims of this because they come, just, just because they come from a certain eth ethnic community. You know, I, my wife and I have two daughters and I couldn't imagine living in a place where I stand up as a state representative and say, here are the guidelines for being a Commonwealth of Pennsylvania resident and operation in Pennsylvania and have guidelines that don't protect young women from this, young minor women from this heinous act. I find it to be controlling of women and unbecoming of living in a civilized society. I respect so many religious and cultural rituals and traditions, as long as they don't hurt, physically harm people, emotionally set people back, and especially women in our Commonwealth. I'm not alone as our State Department considers female mutilation as a human rights issue, and I happen to agree. There should be less focus on the control of women through permanent female genitalia mutilation. I just can't even get the words out sometimes that I think we have to actually be talking about this. That's why I'm so glad Representative Mert is being proactive by ensuring that such an act, if it was to occur within our borders, that law enforcement would have the tools necessary to prosecute those responsible. I'm pleased to support this legislation and look forward to it coming up for a vote in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Day. Our next speaker is Re Representative Aaron Coffer. And thank you, Tom. And, and I just want to say thank you for bringing up this legislation, House Bill 135, uh, female uh, genital mutilation, an issue that I never heard about on the campaign trail. It's not something that we talk about going door to door, talking with constituents, but something that is happening here in Pennsylvania. We talk about 10 to 25,000 people who are at risk of this barbaric procedure of female genital mutilation. This is the ultimate issue of women's rights and human rights, not only in our commonwealth, but in our country. And it's something that, as we sit here and we talk about this, it's alarming to think that this is happening within our borders could be happening at this very moment. I'm pleased to be here to help encourage and bring knowledge of this. And thank you to Danielle Moore as well for working on this. This, is, this issue is not a partisan issue. This isn't anything. But I hope we'll act quickly and turn this into law. And I thank you, Tom and Rep Representative Mert, for bringing this to my attention. Because this is a bill and things that I never heard about until coming here. And I appreciate you for your leadership 
in taking on this issue for something that we need to get done quickly here in Pennsylvania. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Coffer. And our final uh, speaker this morning will be uh, my colleague, Representative Eli Ivankovich. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Um, as a father of two young girls, I was very surprised and shocked, actually, whenever Representative Tom Mert brought this subject to my attention. Um, it's a very important issue. But it's also a very uncomfortable issue. It's very uncomfortable for a lot of reasons. But my plea is that we not let that idea that something is so uncomfortable, the notion that something makes us so queasy, stop us from acting on this legislation. We're asked to put up votes and to support things or oppose things on a daily basis in this building. And as my legacy and for how I look back and am remembered by the people who elect me, I want to be able to tell them that I stand up for protecting young women from such a heinous act. I think it's our duty, and I again want to thank Representative Mert for bringing this issue to our attention. But let's not hold back on acting on it just because it's uncomfortable to talk about. Uh, before we take some questions, uh, someone uh, asked me earlier today uh, where we learned about this issue happening. And uh, we have some anecdotal data that some of these cases, which I will call botched mutilations, which have taken place uh, down in uh, the part of uh, Pennsylvania that I represent, Montgomery County of Philadelphia, where some of these botched cases end up in an ER where a young woman is, is mutilated and uh, they cannot get her to stop bleeding, so the family takes the young woman to the ER. And uh, some of you know I served in Iraq for 14 months in 2003 and 4. And uh, much of the work I did in Iraq was humanitarian, uh, what we call civil affairs missions. And uh, there was a situation uh, back in, I guess it was 2003, where uh, we spent a lot of time in the villages. And we went out one day, and uh, one of the villagers, a father, brought us his daughter, who uh, the medic said had gone into shock. And he did a quick cursory examination of the, the young girl and found that she had been, been cut, mutilated. And uh, uh, he thought that as I said, she had gone into shock, and she was immediately taken back to a troop medical clinic where there was a physician to look at her, and we don't know whatever happened to her. But, uh, you know, I saw that up, up close and personal when I was serving uh, in Iraq. And this is a legislation whose time has arrived. And as my colleagues have wisely pointed out, it's a topic we wish we didn't have to discuss. But uh, these victims of female genital mutilation don't have any lobbyists or advocates to fight for them. They only have us, the, the men and women that serve in the legislature. And uh, I'm very proud uh, to have my colleagues here with me today to be uh, brave enough to stand up and, and take a, a position on this bill. Uh, any questions from our, our journalists here today? Yes, sir. So is the implication here that this is somehow exempt or, or gets around child abuse laws, existing laws. I, I mean, I'm just curious how this would be different, for example, if uh, someone showed up in ER and had cut off a child's finger or something like that. I mean, wouldn't that be, you could go after them, you could prosecute for something like that as child abuse. Is this different? Uh, one of the problems, and that's a good question, one of the problems has been that many of the cases that have uh, shown up uh, in an ER, uh, there is a uh, always a language barrier with the adult or the family that, that brings the child in. And uh, frequently there is a, a no police officer or individual who is able to speak that native language of, of the family that brings the child in. And uh, the reports are incomplete. And uh, would it qual qualify as child abuse? Uh, in my opinion, it would be. I'm not an attorney, I'm a teacher, but uh, I think that it would be. Uh, Danielle Moore made a very good observation, and there were some people who, who believed that this practice would qualify as aggravated assault. But the answer is that it does not, and the reason is that there is no malicious intent 
which would uh, preclude it from being prosecuted as, as aggravated assault. Does, does that answer your question? Do you know if anyone has, are there any district attorneys or anyone who have tried to, to prosecute these kinds of cases? Under no, not, not that we know of. We are uh, actively seeking the support of the District Attorneys Association in Pennsylvania, and uh, we have not uh, received uh, notification of that yet, but we believe that they will be on, on board with this. There has not been any other prosecutions uh, uh, for this offense thus far. Thank you. Uh, any other questions today? Uh, just before everyone leaves, I just want, yes, ma'am. How many uh, cultures and which ones are uh, still practicing genitalia mutilation? Uh, that's a very good question. And uh, we find that it is emanating from parts of Africa, parts of Asia, and parts of the Middle East. There is a country in Africa, I think it's Atria, where 98% of the women have been mutilated in this, in this fashion. Uh, as individuals uh, emigrate to the United States, to come to our, our, our nation and settle here and settle in the Commonwealth, they bring this practice with them. And uh, the numbers from all indications are on the rise. And uh, as some of my colleagues mentioned, not just women being victims, they're at risk of being victimized, and we, we want to stop that. So uh, you asked about the culture, and as, as I mentioned in my remarks, there really is no scriptural or religious basis or connection uh, or nexus for, for this practice. This is uh, strictly, I guess, one might call cultural. So is that helpful? Okay. Any, any other questions? Well, thank you very, very much. Uh, we ask for your continued support on this bill. And if you have any questions afterwards and you want to come up, uh, please feel free. I want to thank my colleagues for being here this morning. Thank you very much. Have a great day.